you're a Christian, you can and you should have assurance of your faith. You should know for certain that you're being saved. It should be a normal experience for all followers of Christ. So today, let's answer the question, how do I know I'm saved? Salvation for the Christian is a supernatural experience. It's granted to the believer in Jesus and the sufficiency of his sacrifice on the cross, and it's secured in the Holy Spirit. The believer doesn't suddenly glow or grow an inch taller. There's no immediate external evidence of one's conversion. Everything happens inside, beyond our reach. So can we really know that we're saved apart from saying that we are? The Apostle John says we can. In 1 John 5, 13, the Bible says he writes these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The life of the Christian isn't to be spent wondering or in vain hope. We must pursue the assurance of our salvation. We have to devote ourselves to knowing for certain what we believe and why we believe it. When we do, the Holy Spirit himself gives us all the assurance we need. Assurance begins with a correct perception of salvation. As the apostle defined it in John 17, 3, eternal life is knowing God. Not knowing of God, as the purveyors of cheap grace offer, or knowing about God, as empty theology posits, but knowing and being known by God. It's a life that is marked by the power of the resurrected Christ that was not present before conversion. Salvation is not an insurance policy. It is not a golden ticket to heaven. It is the life in full that Jesus promises, present to God at all hours of our day and in the presence of God in every aspect of our lives. When a person subscribes to one of those false notions of salvation, those that, that really only concern themselves with entrance to heaven, well, there's a very real possibility that conversion has not occurred and that the rich inner transformation that the Bible describes never becomes a reality. In a case like this where salvation is reduced to I don't know, the minimum amount that a person has to believe to be led into heaven, assurance has no foundation from which to build. The supernatural nature of salvation is both assuring and challenging. It is very good because regeneration and salvation is completely the work of God. So we will know that it's done perfectly. At the same time, it's a challenge because we don't get our hands dirty in the process, so the mystery can be a bit unnerving. What this means is we want a way to test, to uh, examine or evaluate our salvation in order to have assurance that God wants us to have. We find an outline for the things to examine in the first epistle that the Apostle John writes. The first step in gaining assurance is to confirm your relationship with God, to affirm that you know God. So you ask yourself, do you love him? A characteristic of a true believer is that they love God and, and love Jesus. Now we can sift our response to test it in light of the witness of Scripture. Do you, for example, love God himself? Or do you just love the idea of God? Are you experiencing the depth of life, for example, that your beloved Savior promised that you would experience. This foundation of love expands in so many directions that all, every one of them, affirm your relationship with God. Does your love draw you to uh, God's presence? Do you look forward to the communion of prayer, this supernatural ability to talk with your responsive God? Have you experienced the amazement of his grace when you, when you discover a new truth in the reading of the Bible? These are the kinds of supernatural experiences that build your assurance of being saved. 
In the first chapter of John's epistle, he gives us another point of explanation, our sensitivity to sin. A golden ticket clutcher or someone who prays the magic words, they may go about the rest of their lives in the same exact way that they did before they got the ticket or prayed those magic words. The truly regenerate have received the indwelling Holy Spirit and his tolerance for sin is zero. This means that the believer will have an increasing sensitivity to sin because our fellowship with the perfectly holy God, well, we're going to become more and more aware of the rebellion that remains in our life and our love for God and our gratitude for his grace moves us to do something about that sin. The true believer will never take the Lord's grace for granted and and simply allow rebellion and sin to coexist with their faith. The believer cannot do so comfortably as the Holy Spirit simply won't allow it. The passage in Romans chapter 7 that's constantly used to justify ongoing sin needs to be read a lot more carefully. The apostle is not throwing his hands up in the air, accepting that, you know, sin can have its way. Not a chance. He refers to the battle between light and dark as the war that it is, with his soul trapped in the middle. Do you have that sense about the sin in your life? Our obedience to the Lord and his commands is another place where we can find assurance. Once again, John is explicit on this point, saying that in chapter 2, verse 4, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The great thing about this point is that you can look at concrete things in your life. You can examine your choices and your behaviors, the, the things that you do, the things that you don't do in answering that challenge. The test is not that you obey perfectly 100% of the time because we know that's not a realistic standard according to our fallen natures. But as we mature, there should be an increasing sensitivity to sin and a growing desire to address that sin. Our assured soul should long to become more obedient. John says that the believer will grow in obedience, evidenced by an increasing Christ-likeness in our lives. Do you see this growth in your life? John's epistle contains a number of other experiences that the Christian can evaluate to build their assurance. And, And they're all similar in that they are not simply external factors that a person themselves could cause to happen. Each is a supernaturally affirmed evidence of relationship with God. Each shows that you know God. Christians are not made to wonder. Christians are made to have assurance because in that assurance, a life of worship and service and fellowship and evangelism and everything else is birthed and grows. Set aside some time and evaluate your faith in terms of these biblical standards. If you find yourself strong in one aspect but falling short in another, don't panic. Commit yourself to humbly seeking the face of God in prayer and the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Be assured, my friends.